turn to somebody and say, welcome. Just welcome somebody to church. Welcome about two or three people to church. Hallelujah. Last week, I was talking about faith, and I got to a place, and in it, I mentioned oh, Jesus told Peter that he prayed for him so that his faith will not fail. If there is any time this prayer has to be prayed, it should be our days. Because now, knowledge has risen so high that sometimes where to place faith is difficult. We get into a place, a time and a season where logic is fighting against faith. We want to reason everything out and even reason God out. Because our mind, the world teaches us what we can touch, what we can feel. It teaches us how to go through, uh, you go to the laboratory, you do ABC, this is what you're going to get. And somebody comes and tells you, There's, you can just believe in somebody you haven't seen. Sometimes it's difficult, but we have to believe it. Number one is God who first revealed himself to us. Because faith comes from God. If God does not reveal himself, we are unable to know him. So he is the beginning of our faith. He the initiator of our faith. He comes to Abraham. Abraham didn't ask him to come. He will come to Abraham. Abraham, get up and move. I have a place for you. Abraham, I've never seen this man before. He's never, he just had conviction within him and a step voice to him that let's go. And without doubting, he just got up and followed the man, the voice. It is he, God, who is at work. So faith is initiated by God, and it begins in our heart. Say amen. amen. In our prayers, every prayer needs to be prayed in faith. Because the God we are dealing with is a God of what? We don't see him. We cannot handle him. How many of you have seen God before? With your naked eyes. Who have just touched God and embraced him? Oh, Yehoah. <laughs> you heard the word and you believe the word and you know there is God, isn't it? Amen. So you believe, so sh you are sure in your heart there is God. Once we begin to believe, God begins to show himself. What strengthens our faith is that in our belief, we see the hand of God or things working in a certain way. Those things help us to stand when we are in trial to look back to that and strengthen our faith. That is what Israel almost forgot. Israel was in captivity, and God sent a man called Moses. His birth was in a period where almost all his counterparts were killed, who were male. The time he was going to be born, that was the time. The decree also came that any male son that is born by an Israelite should be killed. But God, by his supernatural power, placed that faith in the heart of the mother. 
And while everybody was killing their sons because of the fear of Pharaoh, this woman said, my son is so beautiful and nice. I will risk my life and I won't kill. I don't know how he was going to keep this boy because he's going to grow and work in the community. But he never thought about that. <laughs> he never thought about the, the, the king's anger. He never thought about her life. But there is something in her heart that made her make, take that decision. Other women gave birth and their children were killed. This woman alone said, Tofiakwa, I won't kill my son. So she believed and acted. She then, God then gave her wisdom, said, okay, I will keep her. And was keeping her from everybody. Maybe if he's here, you dress him like a, uh, like a, a girl. By the point, uh, the baby couldn't uh, be hidden. There are certain things you can hide them for some time, but you cannot hide things forever. So she herself realized that the time has come. Either I kill my son, or I die with my family, or I find another way of keeping this son. So they did a small uh, basket, a boat, and put this boy in, believing that this boy wouldn't die. They said, ah, for killing my son, I won't kill. So they put this boy on a river called Nile. They didn't only put the boy and left. The sister was watching. But they believed that somebody must come and pick this child. And when you see this child, you cannot kill that child. You have to take care of the child. It is all faith. But the same God who put that faith in their heart, the same God worked it out from the other side. And the king's daughters just decided, I want to go and swim. I'm going out. She said, I'm going to sleep in the room. I'm going out. And her going out and the babies coming there coincided. It's not coincident. It's faith was working here and faith was working here. When you move in faith, God knows how to work things out to fulfill your faith. The woman came. The moment they got there, maybe the child, I don't know whether somebody first somewhere, the child started crying with a male voice cry and caught the attention of everybody. God is still at work. <laughs> she cried in a way that it caught the attention of everyone that came there. And the lady said, ah, I've, heard, I've heard some baby crying. Who is that? Then go and bring the child. They brought the child. The moment she looked at the child, the Holy Spirit said, this is not the one you should kill. You can't kill what God See, you won't kill. The very enemy that was looking for this boy to kill, God placed something in the heart that this child, I want to adopt this child like my child. The moment she made that decision, the sister came. The same faith working. The same God working. She said, I know somebody who can take care. <laughs> if you want somebody who can take care, there's somebody I know have a lot of breast milk. He said, well. And the sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and call a nurse for you from the Hebrew women that she may nurse the child for you? God is at work. And that is how God works for us. She, the woman, Pharaoh's daughter should have suspected. But the Holy Spirit is at work. 
God is at work. When God is at work, every mind logic is arrested. It's only the heart that moves. The heart was moving towards this baby so much that she couldn't reason again. She said, okay, go and bring her. They brought her and she gave it to them. The boy's own mother. I said, Mommy Ness, take good care of this baby for me. I will pay you to take care of your own son, which I had wanted to kill. You see, sometimes the devil thinks he's wise. But the foolishness of God is wiser than Pharaoh's wisdom, than men. So sometimes we need to trust this God that he can do all things. He says, hey, then he will say, hey, this baby, when I throw, what will happen? No, 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 don't think about that. God says that this is a real child. This child will not die. And she was just convinced that something will happen. Eventually, she herself was paid to take care of her own child with good salary. So God brought this baby out. And the Bible said, by faith. The Bible mentioned that by faith, Moses' mother hid Moses. So it was faith. He believed that, look, this baby will not die. There's a destiny for this baby. No matter the economic situation, this my business will never die. <laughs> so on their way, Moses grew. Maybe when she was feeding her, taking care of her. She took very good care of her, I know, and I believe that. Because she's his, her own son, you don't have to tell him to take good care. <laughs> the mother and son relationship was there. He was speaking to, the, to him, Moses, don't tell, but you are my real, I'm, I'm your real, Mother, God has a purpose for you. You keep on. Don't live like the Egyptians. Live like a Hebrew. So he told, maybe he might have spoken to him about uh, 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 his, his grandfather, uh, uh, how they came to that place, and how God revealed himself to their, uh, their grandfather, Abraham, and how they, they moved and moved and, and Jacob gave birth and how uh, Joseph came there and they came here and how they turned 10 and now they are now tormenting and killing their, their sons. And he, maybe he told him all the stories. He said, keep it here. So he knew that the Israelites were his brothers. So one day he saw two of them uh, one of them fight the, you know, he saw the Egyptians and they were, they were always, they were beating the, uh, and they saw two of them fighting. And they went and helped his brother. And killed the other one. And hid it. I said, don't worry. I'm your brother. I'm just facing up like Egyptian, but you know, I'm one of you. So the next time, two Jews were, Israelis were fighting. He said, oh, you are brothers, the same church. <laughs> you are in the same church. You don't need to fight when you are in the same church. I wanted to settle them. If you were fighting with another, they said, that's a different thing. But you are the same brother, the same church. Why are you fighting? I want to say, hey, Moses, you think if you do something, nobody knows. The one you help to kill, the other one. He told all of us, we know it. You want to kill me too? Like how you kill the Egyptian? So this thing has gone out. The thing I thought I was hiding. So it is out. So he advised himself. Maybe he didn't go home. Straight. 
He crossed the Ghana border. <laughs> and Togo is the, is the nearest. He passed there. There's some bush. Uh, no, you know, there's some bush place, road. Then, isn't it? There's some places. It's all the same Ghana. They cook here and they come and eat. Uh, the family house is in Togo, and, and the other family is here. So when they cook, they want to eat together. You cross, and you go and eat, and you come back. It's just that our masters divided us, uh, and, and the French say, I will take this. The English say, I'm going to take this. But the same family. And how you can find some Zema? Avorian Zema and Ghanian Zema. And they are. <laughs> so he ran away. And that's very wise. Went into the wilderness for so many years. God appeared to him. Come and take your, um, uh, take your brothers home. As he came back and, and God sent him. No, 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 God. That those people. Ghana. Ghanians. To go back. Take them out of the Look, whatever you do, they will insult you. They will give you a nickname. They know how to give nickname. I know my people. Because they go, go, go. I say, no, 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 go, go. I tr- God, you know, I tried. It didn't work. He said, this time I'm not sending you. So God revealed himself to him. God had to convince him. He said, do it. He did it with miracle and sign. And, you know, he told God that, God, look, me, I'm a stammerer. Moses, bokeh. How do you say? Ohamu. Ha! Moses, the way you are eloquent, the king's house, they taught to how to speak. Very eloquent. And Stephen said it. <laughs> they were killing Stephen. You can speak like a lawyer. You take this and take this and take this and analyze it. Moses, we know you. Right? Moses said, Moses, I'm a stammer. <laughs> God, at that time I wasn't an I'm a stammer. Um, uh, Moses was learned. He said, uh, Moses was doing what? Learned. In all the wisdoms of the Egyptians. And was mighty what? In ways and deeds. And this man who is mighty in ways and in deeds, at a point said, I am a stammerer. He said, sometimes you, your boldness can be broken. You may be somebody, you can, and you say, is that the person? No, 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 you think he can do it. He can't do it. He's been broken. The guy was broken so much that he became a stammerer. Sometimes fear and other things can make you stammer in life. Not only with your mouth, but even in business. You might have made a big business, but have collapsed, and when you want to rise up and say, go and do business, hey, no, 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 God, hey. Shall it me? I'm not. Um, um. But everybody was looking to you. Moses, then God convinced Moses, go. I'm going to go with you. With all these signs, he went, delivered them, brought them out of the, uh, 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 the slavery with signs and wonders. Israel saw those signs. They saw that they were separated from those people. They saw there was light somewhere and there's darkness somewhere. And they saw all this. They saw God dividing the Red Sea and, 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 and marching them in. And, 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 and after they've crossed, they saw Pharaoh's army coming, chariot coming, and God destroying all of them. God fighting for them when they didn't have strength. 
Then they got to a place where they have to enter there. They, they, they saw the hand of God throughout. God was showing them so that they can have faith in him. Water coming from the rock. Manna falling from heaven. So what else do you have to see before you believe? So they got to the final place. God said, okay, it's not the wilderness that I didn't promise you the wilderness. I promised you a promised land. So I want to take you there. So Moses sent spies. Uh, uh, Modine, how do you call them? Huh? What is the modern day? To go and spy. Those people were to go and spy. To look at the land and see how it is. The purpose is when they come back and give the report. These people can have faith to enter. But sometimes you can mean a certain way, but it can go the negative way. So they went, they said, everybody should bring somebody from your tribe. So that it won't be like somebody came and told you and said, you, one of you, you are among. So they all did. And Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said to them, go up this way in the south and go up to the mountains. You go up and see what the land is like whether the people who dwell in it are strong or what? Whether the people who dwell in it are what? Strong or weak? Few or what? Whether the land they dwell in is good or what? Bad. Whether the cities they inhabit like camps or stronghold. Whether the land is rich or what? Poor. And whether the are forests there or not? Be of what? So he told them, be of what? You see, when you want to operate in faith, you need courage. Well, I didn't know. But you have, you have to believe it. So they started the journey. Whether the land is rich or okay, now be uh, whether the land is rich or poor, and whether there are forests there or not, or, 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 and bring some of the fruit of what? The land. Now the time was the season of the first ripe grapes. Continue. So they went up and spied out the land from the wilderness of Zin as far as Rehob, near the entrance of Hamath. And they went up through the south and came to Hebron. Ahinam, Ahimam, Shishai, and Talmai, the descendant of Anak, the giant, where the giant were, were there. Now the Hebron was built seven years before uh, Zoan in Egypt. Then they came to the valley of Eshkol, and they cut down a branch and some cluster of grapes, they carried it between two of them on Nepal. The grape was so big that it takes two people to carry it. So they carried them. They carried it between two of them on the pole. One was behind, one was in front. They also brought some of the pomegranate and figs. So Whatever you need there was there. The place was called the Valley of Eshkol because of the cluster which the men of Israel cut down there. Continue. And they returned from spying out of the land after 40 days. After 40 days, you have spied the land. You fasted 40 days of prayer. <laughs> God said, look into those things break. After you finish. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, don't worry. <laughs> now they departed and came back 
to Moses and Aaron and all the congregation of the children of Israel in the wilderness of Paran at Kadesh Barnea. They brought back word to them and to all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. So the evidence of what God said was brought. God said, I am taking you into a land that is full of... And they brought the evidence. They grabbed and they showed it. So this should make them happy. But it's going to create something different. Let's look at their reaction. So your reaction to whatever you see can also mean whether you can win or you can lose. Then they told him and said, we went to the land where you sent us. Moses. It truly flows with what? Is that what God said? Is that what God said? Did they see what God said? So what is their problem? It truly flows with milk and honey. And this is its fruit. You who didn't go, we have brought something as an evidence to prove that what God said is the truth. So what was the problem with Israel? This is where the problem is. Many people's faith has failed. It's because there's nevertheless. They brought God's report. Now, this is their own report. The God report is that this is what God has said. We have gone there. This is what the word of God has said, and I've seen it. And this is the result, the, the evidence. But there is also man's report. This is not God's report I'm going to read. It is their own deducing what they have deduced in their mind. So sometimes you are faced with faith. Sometimes there are other voices that come contrary to the voice of God. Nevertheless, hmm, I say more. The people who dwell in the land are what? Did they fight them? So how did they know they are strong? They are strong. The cities are what? Fortified. Just looking at the impossibility of the situation. Sometimes people can, some people can give you a report, and by the time you finish with the report, you are down. Moreover, we saw the descendant of what? Anakde. I don't know, The Amalekite dwell in the land of the south. The Hittite, the Jebusite, Amorite dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanite dwell by the sea and along the banks of the Jordan. Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and take possession, for we are well able to overcome it. Caleb went with them. He saw the same thing they saw. Their first report, he agreed with them. But the second report, he said, no, I'm not going to agree with this. This is not what God promised us. He cast his mind back and saw how God delivered them from this strong man called Pharaoh. When a chariot, you didn't have any weapon, and Pharaoh governized all his army with the armor cars, with all kinds of gadgets, trying to come and overrun you, he saw God fighting that battle, killing all those armies. So why should you be afraid of some people? who are not as organized as Egypt. But sometimes little thing can put fear in you and let you forget the past in which God has done for you. So, the man who had gone up with him said, we are not able to go up against the people 
For they are what? Stronger than we plus God. <laughs> Is that what you are also saying? God said, I am on your side. So when you face a situation, don't tell the situation is stronger than you. Don't say it's stronger than we. Got God on your side alone is a victory for you. Amen. Then look at, oh my God. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land who they have spied out, saying, the land through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants. But you went, you should thank God that it is eating the people there. So this land alone, God can cause it, if it eats people, God can cause it to eat the giant. Oh? So why are you afraid of the giant? My God. He said, the land eats it in what? Inhabitants. It does what? The land eats inhabitants. Ghana, it destroys its inhabitants. He said, hey, Ghana, you ask somebody, I want you to go and start this business in Ghana. He said, hey, Ghana, there be Asasia. It's chili. He doesn't like its own citizens. Unless you are a stranger before you can succeed and your business can last. If you are proper Ghana, your people will destroy your business. That's what the people said. Hey, that land, he doesn't like its own people. Have you seen which business? Count me 20 of the businesses that have lasted for 40 years. And count the foreigners' business. For them, they don't eat them. But their citizens, they eat them. Anytime there's a change of government, it eats the other people who survived, who made their business in one government, waiting for another change. For them, self-destruction. And we want our economy to blossom. How? If you don't add and you come to the place, you won't go anywhere. Let's add. Don't let it come and replace. When you add, and the Lord added unto the church, He didn't come to replace. So the people were afraid. And they gave this bad report. There we saw the giant. The descendant of Anak came from the giant. And we were like grasshoppers. In our own sight. How do you see yourself? The people, it's not the people who saw them as grasshoppers. They themselves saw themselves like what? In their own sight. And the way you see yourself, that's how people will see you. And so, we were in their sight. So, they decided how they should be. If you want to be like a giant, what do you do? See yourself as a giant. And others will begin to see you as a giant. So, there are two reactions. They had two report. The land is good, and they had two people, and one encouraging them, that let us go quickly. They are meat. They saw them as meat. But one also saw them as the one that they were like grasshoppers. And grasshoppers, if we put the, I thank God they didn't go to the land. If we put grasshoppers on the land, do you know what they do? They destroy the land. They will eat all the green and destroy before you realize nothing works. Then we have 11, we have 10 grasshoppers and two human beings. (laughs) 
The 11 grasshoppers convince the entire nation. And whoever you believe, you go with that person. And when they heard these two, instead of believing the two of them report, they believe the ten. Like how they said the majority carries the vote. Sometimes it's not true. The one that is I, the majority will be you plus God. Anybody plus God, they are the majority. They must carry the vote. So that is where they got to. Let, what was their reaction? Their reaction was, look at their reaction. Their faith failed. This an instant of failure of faith. Your faith can fail depending on what you hear and what you see. The head, the people painted a picture and deflated their faith. Instead of them who were walking with God in faith, by faith, God who was feeding them, every day they will be waiting that manna will come from heaven. How do you know? How can manna come from But you were still walking in faith that by all means God will not fail us the next day. And truly, God has never failed you. So why at this point do you think God can fail you? So they decided their faith became free. Sometimes people can deflate your faith to fail. Situations can deflate our faith to fail. So know who you work with, work with. Know who you hear when you want to get faith. If you work with fearful people, they will create fear in you and you can't have faith. Hey, I'm a, your headache. Ha! Hey. This type of headache, it may be tumor. <laughs> he, he, he will just create and before you hear, that thing had paralyzed you. In fact, fear can paralyze. It can paralyze your mind, paralyze your body, paralyze your spirit, paralyze everything, and you can't do anything. So they got paralyzed. <laughs> then they reacted to what the people said according to what they believed. The next, this is not... The people then, and all the children of Israel complained what? Against Moses and Aaron. And the whole congregation said to them, if only we had died in the land of Egypt, or if only we had died in the wilderness, why has the Lord brought us to this land to fall by the sword? That our wives and children won't be should become victims. Wouldn't it not be better for us to return to Egypt? Egypt where they were enslaved, they were killing their male children, they still want to go back there. Egypt, where God showed his power and brought them out and killed their soldiers, they still want to go back there. So, they said to one another, let us select what? A leader and return to Egypt. This Moses there, we want the one who will behave in unbelief like us. Chief unbeliever to lead us. So, anytime people want to move away from God, 
Somebody must lead them. And these are people who have to move to God. There's somebody who also lead them. He said, look, let's have a leader. Who can take us back to Egypt? Chief, fearful man who can believe. So, but before we do that, we have to kill this Moses <coughs> and Aaron. And okay, then the, <laughs> and Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. But Joshua, the son of Nun and Caleb, the son of Jephna, who were among those who had spied out the land, tore their clothes. So that you don't understand why people are behaving irrational in faith. You have seen God's power before. You know what God can do. Why should these people still be afraid? And they spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, the land we pass through to spy out is an exceedingly good land. Our eyes is on the good, not on the bad. It's a good land. We have appetite for it. Some of you have no appetite for anything. <laughs> what you have appetite, the food you have appetite for, so that you don't look at it. You see, uh, you don't think about how it was cooked. Who cooked it or not, you don't care. The appetite wants you to eat it quick. He said, let's go quickly. We have seen it. It is a good land. So, if the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us. A land which flows, he repeated the thing, with what? Milk and honey. He repeated what God said about the land. See, this is what God has said. Not a land who eats its inhabitants. God did not promise us that land. He promised us a land that flows with milk and honey. Then the people only do not what? Rebel against the Lord. The Lord wants to take you in, but you don't want to go there. Some of us, we are rebelling. For they are our bread. The people they were afraid of, the man of faith or the person of faith sees it as a bread. The problem so many people are afraid of, it becomes a stone of promotion for you. Amen. Whatever difficult situation that your faith faces, it also gives you a promotion. Like David, when they saw Goliath, they were afraid, but he saw it as promotion. He saw his wife inside. He saw his diary. He said, this one there, if I kill him, free wife. <laughs> this one, the parent won't ask you any question. They will say, go and bring cloth. They will say, go and bring nine goat or nine sheep or nine cow. Nothing. Empty-handed. They will bring you a wife, including money. Because he is from the palace. So when she's coming, at least uh, she'll be loaded. So she saw, I said, listen, the 10 people have running away. He sees something in it. He sees a reward in it. He said, like, if I kill him, what will you give to me? He said, oh, you give. So the Israelites said, have you seen this man who has come up surely? He has come up to defy Israel. And it, it shall be that the man who kills him, the king will enrich what? With great what? Will give him his daughter too. So you are no longer going to be uh, 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 WWE. This one, you are going to marry a rich man's daughter. 
I'm not only marrying a rich man, but the rich man say, I will make you rich too. So he never looked at the giant, he looked at the reward. Acting in faith, you must see the result, the end result, and the reward in it. So he, the people said, let's go back. And they look at their reaction. Let's go back to their reaction. And all the congregations said to the, to, they said to stone them with, with stones. And all the congregation said to stone them with what? Sometimes, that's why it is. When people are angry with a church, a system, for their own personal reason, and they try to convince people and they are not following them, they want to fight them. I get it. He said, look, we have to stone these people or they will hinder us from going because faith is stronger than unbelief. They know the kind of faith these people have. If they don't kill them, they won't be able to choose a leader. If you want to go, why don't you choose your leadership and go? But they know these people are standing on some truth which cannot be denied. So they try to stone them. Two million people trying to stone few people. You, there will be a, the stones will be like a mountain on top of you. Look at it. And all the congregation said to them to stone them. Now the glory, I like God, the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of meeting before all the children of Israel. See, God will never allow the unbeliever to destroy you. His glory then appeared. And they understand the glory because they've walked with God in the wilderness. Then the Lord said to Moses, how long will these people reject me? And how long will they not believe me? with all the signs which I have performed among them. I will strike them with the pestilence and disinherit them. And I will make of you a nation greater and mightier than they. Which one of you, if God comes to you here, and say, Ghana, I'm here hunting. Ghanaians, they are not people you should die for. Even my son who died for them, look at what they are doing. <laughs> so I don't want trouble. I will finish all the Ghanaians and I will keep you and your family. And I will make you great. I will make you rich. I will make you say, <laughs> Who shall we say no? You say, God, kill them quick. <laughs> but Moses is selfless. He's thinking about God's glory, thinking about God's name, thinking about God more than himself, and man of it. Because of this people, Moses couldn't get to the promised land. They are the cause. And you say Moses go pay Ubi. They are the cause. Moses had God and had so much that anything that good against God, he wanted to use his strength to fight it. So look at Moses, Moses reply. Will you reply? Can you reply that? And Moses said to the Lord, then the Egyptians will hear it. For if we kill them, the Egyptians will do what? For by your might, you brought these people up from among them. 
and they will tell it to the inhabitants of this land. They have heard that you, Lord, are among these people, that you, Lord, are seen face to face, and your cloud stands above them, and you go before them in a pillar of cloud by day and in a pillar of fire by night. Now, if you kill these people as one man, then the nations which have heard of your fame will speak, saying, because the Lord was not able to bring these people to the land which he swore to give them. Therefore, he killed them in the wilderness. Have you, have you seen it? He said, God, what you did have spread, and the people know that we are coming to inherit the land. They then said they know. And fear has come upon their life. But if you kill these people as one man, they will say the reason why you brought them, that when you came to this place, you faced difficulties. And you couldn't find us. That is why you killed them. So he was thinking about what? God's, what people will say about God. I hope. Finally. And now I pray. Let the power of my Lord be great. Just as you have spoken, saying, the Lord is what? He quoted God, his word. Anytime time you argue, bring God's word to him. God, you are teaching us long-suffering. <laughs> so now, eat your own, drink your own, listen. The Lord is long-suffering and abundant in mercy. So he was bringing the aspect of God to show forth the aspect of God. You are merciful. So you have to show the other aspect of your mercy. Lord, you are long-suffering. These people, you can, you, you, you can bear them for a very long time. Forgiving iniquity and transgression, but he by no means clears the guilty. Ah, that's God. Though. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and the fourth generation. The fact that you are mercy, it doesn't mean that uh, if somebody is guilty, uh, uh, yes, yes. he is a just God and also a merciful God. So, all your sins that you do, don't think it's what God has forgotten about it. What helped us is that in Christ, he has paid the price. It doesn't mean that what you did hasn't been punished. It has been punished. It has been paid. Are you getting it? So, he said, God, that's how you are. Moses Pardon the iniquity of these people, I pray, according to the greatness of your mercy. Just as you have forgiven these people from Egypt, even until what? Now. He said, God, I have worked with you, you know, these people, if we were to kill them, we would have killed them a long time. When you were even giving them manna, look at how they complain that God, this manna there, when he came first, they were happy and they were rejoicing, and they call it mana. What is it? Minini, mana. What is this? There was a gun where that had been corrupted. <laughs> they said, what is this? And they were happy, and this is the food that was making them healthier. Complete diet. No cholesterol. <laughs> no bad cholesterol. It gives you the proper measure of the cholesterol you need in your body. This is what they need. 
It clears your, 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 your systems. No cancer in it. No disease in it. No sickness in it. This one doesn't carry anything. And they were eating. They say, hey, I don't need dinner when you. We can walk. Even the old men are becoming stronger. All the vitamins are in it. And these people were very happy. Walking. They are at the point say, ah, they are doing it. We are a dear, we have eaten up. Morning, manna. Afternoon, manna. Evening, manna. Ah, manna. <laughs> How did they change? Uh, that's a human, human life. Moses. I'll continue next week. Should I? Eventually, there was a consequence of faith that had failed. Israel's faith failed. They were to enter into it through faith. He said, but truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. Because of this man, who have seen my glory, the sign which what I did in Egypt and in the wilderness, and have put me to the test. Now this ten, these ten times, and have not heeded my voice, and not that is they have not acted in faith. They certainly shall not see the land of which I swore to their fathers nor shall any of those who rejected me see it. That is the consequences of faith failure. We have heart failure and we have faith failure. Faith failure will not let you enter there. So Jesus prayed for Peter that there's one thing I'm praying for you, that your faith will not fail. I pray that your faith will be strong. In our prayers, our faith is very, very important. Praying, all prayers prayed need to be prayed in faith. Huh? Whether you are petitioning to God, whether you are praying, interceding for somebody, whether you are even worshiping and praising God or thanking God, whether you are, you are petitioning or bringing your, request, your own personal request before God, you really need to operate in faith. And that is why I am hammering the faith. Prayer become lifeless when faith is taken away from it. It is faith that put life in prayer. There are prayers we petition, and there are prayers we make declaration. The Bible says that if you have faith like a uh, uh, master say, you shall say to this mountain, Mark 11, the Mark 11, uh, 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 20, from 21, 22, 23, 24, going. It talks about if you have faith. And Peter asks, Jesus, why were you able to speak to these three? And the next time when we came, the tree was dead. And Peter remembered and said to the rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. And Jesus gave him the solution. He said, look. So Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. Tell someone, have faith in God. Have faith in God. Tell them, have faith in God. Have faith in God. For as surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt where. See, faith and doubt is from the heart. It's not from the mind. It's from the heart. But the mind can cast doubt. 
What you hear can create faith, but it creates faith within you. It gives you conviction. You hear many things, but you are not convicted by everything. You hear many things, but you are not afraid of anything, many things. It is what you are convicted in, you are convinced that this thing is true, is that is what creates other fear or faith. So you see, if you say to this mountain, or if you say to this building, be thou removed and go to Chiranda. <laughs> it's not only saying, and don't doubt. What will, you, what will make you not to doubt? The only thing that can bring you not to doubt is because God has said it. And because God has said it, he also has the ability to carry this place to Chiranda. You know Chiranda? How many of you know Chiranda? How many of you have heard the word Chiranda before? Wave at me if you heard it. How many of you have heard the word Chiranda before? If you haven't heard Chiranda before, then wave at me. That's my village where I was born. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever God says, he has what it takes to perform it. So if he says something to you, like I said the other day, the God speak, you're going to give birth. But nothing is happening. Doctor's report said it is not possible. One year has passed, two years has passed, three years has passed, and you still hold on to what God is saying. The very convinced it will come to pass. Amen. It happened to that lady in, in Tamale. Seven years. She just gave birth this year. When everybody have given up, doctor's report has given up, natural law trying to give it up, everything give up. But God, word will always stand. Yeah. If Jesus gave her that, so next week I'll be talking about most of this. I will hit until your faith become very strong. Yeah. Because lack of faith or faith failure will not let you enjoy the Christian life as it is. What sets you apart from unbeliever is your faith. You may all face the same situation, but a man of faith knows that I will go through. The unbeliever knows the thing will eat me. And truly, you will go through. And ask, how did you go through all this and survived? Your faith. That if you have faith like what? This is what Jesus said. He said, you can say you can do what? To, you can do what? Say, say. say. Faith speaks. You don't say, I believe, but you don't say it. The way unbelief also speaks. Things you don't believe, you say them. Things you believe, you say them. So as we pray, there are two sides. You say what you believe. If you shall say to this mountain, be thou what? Remove is like a prophetic word and fall into the sea. As anytime you pray, remember how to speak to the situation. This one is not speaking to God. Their prayers we address God. There are some we address the situation. You get me? You address the situation. 
You address demonic forces. You speak to the situation. Demonic forces, powers of darkness that torment my life, come out. And they have no option if it is back with faith to go out. So there are different types of prayers we pray which have different operations. This one, you can speak to them. He didn't say, ask God to move the, uh, the mountain. He said, if you will believe and speak to the situation, it will do what? There are others we need to pray. That same scripture also says, until the final one ended up. You see? Therefore, because when you speak to situations, they will move. Because when you speak to the mountains and don't die, it will go. Because of that, what is so ever you desire, when you pray, when you pray, do what? When you pray, do what? You don't just come to a prayer meeting and you shall then go home. Come the next day and go home. What have you prayed? It's helpful when your spirit, you pray in tongues. Your spirit prayed. And when your spirit prayed, you build yourself up. But Paul says, I will pray in the spirit and I will pray with the understanding. I will pray with the spirit and I will pray with the understanding. We need to combine the two. When you face a demon troubling you, don't, it's not a tongue. The demon doesn't need tongue. Speak to that situation. That be thou removed. The other aspect is we pray to God. It's called petition. You bring your petition to God. Like how uh, Hannah went to God and said, God, you are the one who gives children. Uh, you are the one who can make people fruitful. Lord, I've come to you. I need a baby male. Specifically, I need a male son. Then in, his, in her petition, she was praying and asking God, I need a male son. I need, I need a male son. Then the, the priest came. Hey, mommy, what about son? The woman said, Pastor. You no, know, sometimes, Pastor, if you don't understand you, sometimes, I know, you, are, you come to me, and tell me, then they come and they're telling, I say, Pastor, you don't understand. Truly, we don't understand. Sometimes the things people are crying over, they shouldn't cry over this. You don't understand. Somebody, my, 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 my boyfriend, my boyfriend have left me. And she was crying like a big woman crying. That is the boyfriend have left. And the pastor said, ah, is he the only man? But you don't know what she's going through. The pastor also knows that sometimes you, some of you come and tell our sto your stories. The moment you finish, we know they say it won't work. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> Oh, it's true. It is then, sometimes you know this and worse. So when you try to even navigate those people, 
on the right way, still, ah, you say, Pastor, I'm believing God. When he says, I need belief. I your old desire. This guy you've taken, he's with another man, lady. I say, oh, dear, me waro me jai. Sure. Who told you? So you think that when you marry the man, he will stop chasing. Then you finish, they start chasing plenty of women. He said, Pastor, let me look around you. And you saw it. <laughs> Most of the marital problem that people go through, they know it from the beginning. We think God will change it on the way. Huh? Akwano ni abutra. O ni abutra. And you know it. I hope I'm telling the truth. Yes. Because you are desperate to marry. Yes. Don't be desperate. You see, sometimes in your desperation, you go and take the devil son. And he becomes your father-in-law. I end here. <laughs> Let's begin. <laughs>